Welcome to my lecture online. Here we have another example where we're going to use that general approach. And the reason why we can use that is because the y term is missing. Now, this is not a homogeneous equation. We do have a function on the right side of equal sign. It is second order. And what we're going to do first is put into the general format. The general format looks as follows. It is y double prime plus some function. Let's call it, um, hmm, how about p of t times y prime, now the y is missing, and we set that equal to q of t. So we want to first put into that format. To do that, we're going to divide everything by t. So we get y double prime minus 1 over t times y prime is equal to, when we divide this by t, we get t plus 1. So we know that our p of t is equal to minus 1 over t, and our q of t is equal to t plus 1. All right, first we're going to make the substitution. We're going to let u equal y prime, and u prime equals y double prime. So we turn it into a first order equation. So this then will look as follows. This then looks as y prime minus 1 over t times u, and that would be equal to t plus 1. Now we need an integrating factor. So the integrating factor is equal to, let's call it mu of t, and that is going to be equal to e to the p of t, well, the integral of that, times dt. So when we do that, we plug in p of t, so that gives us e to the integral of minus 1 over t dt. We can take the negative out. The integral of 1 over t is the natural log of t with the negative, so this becomes e to the minus natural log of t. And uh, that would be like the natural log of t to the minus 1 power, so this becomes equal to 1 over t. All right, there's our integrating factor. Now we can find the solution to the first order linear differential equation. So now we have uh, u of t, there's the general solution of this equation, is equal to 1 over the integrating factor times the integral of the integrating factor times q of t, the equation to the right side equal sign, or not the equation, but the function to the right side equal sign, so times q of t dt plus a constant of integration, just in case this is equal to zero, then we still have this as part of the solution. Now let's plug in what these are equal to. We have u of t is equal to 1 over u, and, oh, did I forget? Nope, that's correct. 1 over t, so that gives us t times the integral of 1 over t, times q of t, and q of t is going to be t plus 1, dt. All right, uh, let's multiply that through. Oh, don't forget the plus c, and closing brackets there. All right, so now we're going to multiply this out. So this is equal to u of t is equal to t times the integral of 1 plus 1 over t dt plus c. And now we're ready to integrate that. We can integrate this and we get the following. Hmm, hopefully we don't run out of board space here. So u of t is equal to, that would be t times, integral of that would be t plus the natural log of t plus a constant. And then we multiply that out, we get the following, u of t is equal to t squared plus t times the natural log of t plus the constant times t. And there is the solution to the first order equation. Of course, we're not looking for the solution of the first order equation, we're looking for the solution of the second order equation. Which means, to go backwards, since we said that u equals y prime, then y will be the integral of u means that y of t will be equal to the integral of u of, or u times 
u of t dt, let's write it like that, which is equal to the integral of this, the integral of t squared plus t times the natural log of t plus c times t, and the whole thing times dt. All right, now the first and the third term are relatively easy to integrate, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is equal to t cubed over 3, so I've taken care of this one, and this is easy to integrate, so plus c t squared over 2, but what about integrating t times the natural log of t? Well, there we need to use integration by parts. So what we do here is if we have the integral of u dv that is, integral, that is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. And what we're going to do here is the natural log of t, we're going to let that u. So let u equal the natural log of t. So du, the differential, is equal to 1 over t, because when we integrate, we get back the natural log of t. And dv is equal to t, that means v is equal to t squared over 2. So now we can take t times the natural log of t, we take the integral of that. So we can say that the integral of u, which is the natural log of t, times dv, which is t dt. So we have the integral of t times the natural log of t dt is therefore equal to u times v, which is t squared over 2 times the natural log of t minus the integral of v du, which would be t squared over t times 1 over t times dt. And this t and that t cancels out, so we end up with t divided by 2. We can integrate that. So this is equal to t squared over t over 2 times the natural log of t minus, when I integrate that, I get t squared over 2 times 2, which is over 4, and we still have the constant of integration from that integral. Now we can plug that into here because that's the integral of this part right here. So this is equal to 2 plus t squared over 2 times the natural log of t minus t squared over 4 plus a constant of integration. All right, so that's the solution to our original equation, but we probably need to clean that up just a little bit. Notice we have a t squared over 2 times c, and we have a t squared over 4. We can combine those two, call it t squared over 4 times some constant, whatever the constant is. So this becomes t cubed over 3 plus some constant, call it c1, times t squared over 4. And the c1 will take care of the, the minus... Uh, 1 here and the c, so and the c over 2 will take care of that. Then we have this term right here, which is plus t squared over 2 times the natural log of t, and that we have another constant right here, plus, and let's call that c2. And that will be the general solution to that original differential equation. So, it takes a little legwork, but again, the procedure is the same. We took our equation, we first set into the general form like that, where we identify the p and the q functions. Then we make the substitution to turn into a single order, a first order differential equation. We find the integrating factor. Then we find the solution to that first order differential equation. Once we have that, then we take the integral of that, because that way we can get back the solution to the original differential equation. Sometimes we do need to worry about how to integrate some of these parts, but essentially we did get the right answer here at the bottom. And that's how it's done.